cultural center, but she has delivered many lectures on India, Indian art, and Indian traditions. Maybe all of you recall, you know, the famous uh, sari show which she organized last year here. Uh, today, Madam is going to enlighten us about uh, uh, the history and important uh, dates connected with <coughs> India House and uh, Chancery Building, two beautiful landmarks of India on famous Buddha Hill. So thank you very much. I welcome Madam on stage, please. Thank you. who is a historian of the second district. He helped us put a lot of pieces together uh, and helped us uh, get the documents from the respective offices. Uh, we, when we arrived here, we tried our best to find out and my husband helped me with a lot of interns. We sent them to different offices, to the mayor's office to find out uh, when was the construction, when did it start, who was living here before because the history of Hungary is very, very interesting because there is nationalization, there is alliance with uh, Germany, then the Soviets are here. So it is very interesting to know how many hands it passed, how many people lived here. We heard of many tales of uh, India House. Uh, some were scary, some were, uh, some were very interesting. We did not know what was true and what was not true. So we decided to find out the truth and we'll go slide by slide and you will see what we have found out. We are trying not to be too speculative on what we have heard because we do not have proof of that. Uh, so we will, So as we begin, as you see, uh, the two uh, houses here, there is 14 Buzavara Gutsa and 16. 14 is where we are currently in, the Chancery building is what we all call it. Uh, this was built in uh, the land allotment, as you see, was done in 1940. Uh, it was allotted to a person called Sanazi Bela, or Sanashi Bela. Uh, he was a paper merchant at that time. Uh, it is said that in the paper it tells us that uh, the currency, uh, no, the paper it tells us that one house was already there. Most of the land was allotted at that time. Uh, you can see the mood of uh, the political mood, 39, 45, World War II was going on, Hungary had joined the Axis, uh, very few people had so much money to buy uh, properties and houses. He, Senazi Bela, a paper merchant, buys his house, which is red in color, where you see where we have put a marker which says Buzavara Gutsa. It wasn't called Buzavara Gutsa, it was called the Turok Ways Dulo at that time. Uh, the house, the only house constructed was of uh, Reinhard Guilana. Is that I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. She was the only one who owned uh, the house. She was a teacher. Uh, Reinhard Guilana was a teacher in girls' school. Uh, she was. Uh, she had a big inheritance, uh, and she was. That's how she owned that house over there. The currency at that time was Pengu. Uh, there was no foreigns at that time. Uh, you, you, the house is what you see in the paper over here. The circle is 
concession to the mayor's office that there will be a construction uh, of the house. The plans were already made. The next slide shows you the structural plans in 1940. The structural plans were very beautifully made at that time. It was designed to be a very modern three-floor house um, with a built-in garage, a beautiful oak uh, staircase, um, very, very beautiful fireplace uh, in Art Deco style. Uh, however, in the siege of Budapest between 44 and 45, what we come to know is uh, that there was a, a bit of structural damage. There was not much damage uh, at that time to uh, this building. However, there was a little damage done, which in the next slide, as you see, it shows in 1948 where we reach um, that in 1948, the house was bought by Bartha George for 40,000 foreigns. Already in 46, August of 46, foreigns had been introduced. Pengu were, um, they were demonetized or Pengu were no longer the currency of Hungary. Um, it was uh, renovated at that time. So it was bought for 40,000 foreigns. 40,000 foreigns from what we calculated with, I don't know what calculation, but somehow it seems like it was 8 million foreigns of today. That was the value of that time. Uh, this person, Georgi Barta, either was a speculator. Uh, he just bought it for 40,000 foreigns in a few months' time, or he realized the nationalization process would come to the residences also. Nationalization process had started uh, in 46. Uh, however, he, in a few months' time, he sold it to Joseph Vanza. Uh, and for about 105,000 foreigns. Uh, that was a lot of money then. Joseph Monza was a very successful businessman. Where you see this, you can see this is uh, the building, plan of the building, which was made in 1940. This not, they kept the structure, the facade of the Art Deco style the same. However, we have a little noting in our uh, timeline telling us that India begins his diplomatic relations with Hungary in 1948. We were not based here, of course, then, because this was not part of India House, or it was we had not rented it. We were somewhere else. Uh, we did not have an ambassador then. Our ambassador was based in Moscow, and we used to have a diplomatic uh, charge here at that time. So November of 1948, we started uh, a diplomatic relation with Hungary. This house, as you see here, is similar uh, picture to what it was planned. Uh, moving on to next, uh, I'll tell you a bit about Joseph Vanza, a pharmacist by profession. He was very, very successful in his time. Uh, he had a factory which was making baking soda. Most of the Hungarians who are here would have probably recipe books of Vanza uh, recipe books or would probably know this name very well. They had uh, also had cookies and they used to do a lot of baking at that time. Uh, Joseph Hanza had, uh, as you can see, you can see he had a lot of vehicles which were used for transporting things. So he was very, very popular uh, at that time. The authorities, however, in 48, when the nationalization process had started, the big mining industries, everything got na started nationalizing. In 46, um, he probably could not imagine his license was revoked uh, and his brand Vanza was taken away from him. So he no longer owned the Vanza uh, factory. He then in 48, for some reason, as I told you, had bought the M, uh, this current embassy. Uh, he did not realize that the houses would get nationalized as well. In this picture, you will see that uh, this is Zuza Vanza, one of his three children. We were able to connect with her. Special thanks to Aniko Sazel, who's unfortunately not here. Uh, she's in Shipron. She was uh, able to help us uh, get in touch with Gabor, who's here today, uh, who helped us um, with, the bit, you know, with history, and Aniko, who helped us get in touch with Zuza. Zuza was one year old when they were evicted by the Secret Service from this house. 
you can see the famous fireplace. Uh, currently, the fireplace, as you see, where in the picture button right below, where we have a Gandhiji statue, there's a beautiful fireplace. So that is a picture with her mother when she was one year old in 1951. And there's another picture of her in the balcony uh, there. This is Zuza on the, the right hand side. Uh, now, obviously, she's no longer one year old. Uh, that's with her. We were able to establish contact. When she came here, she was very emotional because she wanted to always come back and see the house where she was a year old. She says that she came in 1984 uh, when our then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was assassinated. A book, a condolence book was opened. She brought her mother uh, at that time to have a look, just to have a glimpse of the house, the house which they had spent so much money and were evicted from. So she said it was very emotional for a mother who was absolutely heartbroken to stand in a line to go in and sign a book in 1984. Very soon after that, her mother passed away. However, her dad passed away much, uh, much earlier. Uh, she came again once to again have a look at the house. She said she wanted to uh, probably, you know, given someone's visa, she's not been to India as yet. So she said she just came in a car of uh, submitting her visa form. So she came to have a look. She got a glimpse of the embassy then. So too much to a surprise that she was invited by us uh, a few months back in the summer for a meal, and she could not hold her emotion. Zuza was very, very emotional, and she said it was a, a great way of uh, thanking <coughs> her and she said she was now over because she always had that feeling and for, that she wanted to come back and you know connect with this house once for all. Uh, we were not able to get in touch with her brother. Uh, we connected with her cousin who is in the picture. So what the picture you see in the dining room which was taken of course uh, all of you can recognize Zuza and before her is her husband and then you all know the master. Next to her is her cousin who had also many pleasant memories of this house. And that's Anita next to her. On the other side is uh, Gabor. Pointer. All of his pointer, I don't know. So you can see Gabor next to me on my right, uh, Aniko Sazel on my left, and her parents. Uh, there is another picture of um, uh, in, in the, uh, in the on the terrace. However, this is not their residence. Uh, initially, we thought they owned the embassy, but then when we connected, or uh, when we got in touch with the Vansas, they told us, no, they not the residence, they own the embassy. Uh, the next slide will show you we connected well with them, they reciprocated, we are good friends. Uh, they plan to go to India very soon. And so we are very, very happy. They have no malice against India, as we had no part in snatching away their house from them. Uh, however, Amrita Cultural Center was constructed in 2011, as you see. This is the extension which was planned much later on and was built here. Uh, we'll move on to now the history which is very interesting of uh, India House. Now, we go back again, back in time, 77 years, uh, 1940 again where 1940 world war uh, second world war is going on 1938 you know hungarian foreign policies become more pro german more pro italian the mood of political mood is more uh, with germany so as you see in this uh, in this paper on the big buzavaragutsa uh, where a red color house which is currently famously called as the india house so Riemann Hans, I don't know if you can read uh, well on the slide, Riemann Hans was allotted this piece of land. Riemann Hans was a German national who came to Hungary for a period of 10 years. Uh, he came uh, here and uh, he decided to build his house uh, on this plot of land. This is very, very uh, strategically placed for him. Uh, we will come to know why he chose that piece of land. He was a very wealthy businessman. He had a lot of businesses uh, going on at that time. Uh, he was director in many companies. He was initially on Rusti Utsa. Those of you who live here, 
will know Rusti Utsa is, um, is a common thoroughfare. There's a lot of traffic going on for the reasons which probably you'll know later on that why he needed a house with uh, absolutely with a view of Budapest, away, absolutely away from everyone where he could see the all of Budapest. He decided to make the entry, not use Buzavaragutsa or Tarakwes Dula as it was called then. He decided to use the Fereni Utsa, which was behind the house. I do not know if you can see, it's written uh, on the plot behind. The Fereni Utsa does not exist currently. There is a forest behind our India house residence. The forest is uh, there, so it does not exist there anymore. Uh, however, at that time, it seems there was a road, uh, he decided to have, so the entry of the Indian Embassy residence was from there. It was not from where we are using it now. Uh, when we came to Budapest, I found it very strange that you enter the house from behind. I mean, in India, we have something called Vastu. I mean, why would you go behind the house? I mean, if you enter, you enter from the front of the house. So that it was very strange for me that why would anyone design, could we swivel the house around? Of course not. I mean, why would anyone design to have a house from there? I, at that time, we did not know that the entry was not planned. That, that was thanks to Gabor. We were able to locate these papers to figure out that the, how, why was the entry made from behind from Ferenc Yudz. Uh, the next slide uh, shows us um, uh, the architects of the house. The master builder, master builder was Herman Diebold, as it mentioned. Another one was Rizzo Herkit. These were very, very uh, famous architects and builders of their time. Uh, they, had, um, they were building very big buildings. They did not make small houses. So this kind of shows us the fact that this was being used by a man with great uh, power at that time to be able to get someone to build his house. So uh, from what we find out uh, was that uh, Diobold Herman was a master builder. He built the workers' hostel and uh, the Catholic uh, church in Petersburg. He was uh, also... Uh, connected with the stock exchange. He was a big, big architect and builder of his time. There is, however, if you Google, a Diogol Herman architect in Germany. I do not know if there is, it is any connected to that. It probably could be. We have not been able to investigate that. Uh, the second one was Herket Rezo. You can see an architect. He built cinema houses. So these were architects who generally built very big houses. What I'm trying to tell you is, uh, is that normal architects don't do design normal small houses. These houses were built by architects, used, you know, they were only using these architects because he was a man of great reputation and great power then. Germany's occupation of Hungary was going on. Um, there was a big German influence in the country. The next slide shows you the picture the plans of the residence of Buzavara in 1942. These two beautiful pictures show you how, how it was designed to be made. It is currently, no structural changes have been made to the residence, as you all can see. Um, this was obviously the front of the residence, which current front of the residence, and then the residence from behind. Uh, it was uh, in 1940, 26,000 pengos was paid by Riemann Hans. Um, from what our timeline also tells us that uh, the, what the history is going on and the Horthy era was coming in 1944, but that's a little later on. We're trying to give you a little bit idea of the people here, some Indian people, some of us are not so aware of the history then. Most of you were, uh, are aware of the history of what was happening at that time. Uh, moving on to the next slide, this is what you see. Uh, on your right, uh, on your left hand side is the slide which is the front facade of the house. Now, Riemann Hans, a German who was uh, in our Googling and in our investigation, we found out that he was a spy at that time. He had a lot of uh, money which he was getting from Germany to 
spread his uh, German influence of the, of the government of that time in Hungary. So he wanted to conduct his business quietly. He did not want people to know who was coming to meet him. Uh, so he had the entry from the backdoor entry. Uh, we have, um, very interestingly, there is a place where you can tie your horses there. However, so people who were coming were coming from the forest area. Uh, the house, uh, wherever you look from the house, and you can see very well, you have a great view from the back of the forest. You can <coughs> absolutely observe who's coming in and who's going out from there. Um, in my view, uh, as the house papers tell us, it was for him and his wife. They probably just stayed probably in the ground floor. Uh, probably up, up there was used for his offices because it just says rooms. Uh, it doesn't say bedroom, other room. In the next slide, as you will see, detailed plans were made for the house. Um, upstairs, it just tells us there were basic rooms and in between rooms, there were small rooms which it calls them service rooms. Whether they were rooms to make tea or whether they were main rooms to house people, I'm not aware. Uh, Siege of Budapest, of course, most of the Hungarians are aware, was started with in uh, December of 1944 and ended early fe in February of 1945. Uh, the next slide is where we found, uh, I found this, uh, secret this document, declassified document online. I was able to send it to Gabor to verify whether this person who's mentioned in this declassified note of the CIA, whether if he is the same person who owned the house. And of course, Gabor confirmed our doubt. He was of course the same person. The circle portion is not very clear. If you all want to Google, this paper is online. You can see it says that he was, uh, getting 80,000 pengos a month from Germany to spread the influence, which was a huge lot of money at that time. Uh, he was, uh, he and, uh, he was uh, obviously giving a lot of part, a lot of money to the uh, right-wing party at that time. Uh, now, in the timeline as we seeing in 1945, the Hungarian-German forces in Hungary were being uh, defended uh, they were invading the Soviet armies. Now, uh, apparently, some feel that maybe Riemann Hans probably went back to Germany in 1944. However, I'm not too sure on that because this paper was filed by the CIA, the date known is September, 14th September, uh, 1944. And the siege of Budapest happened in December. So he had two months to escape or leave. I do not know whether a man who was so involved in spreading his uh, government, whether he was able to escape or he, we do not know what happened to him. Whether he was able to escape or whether he was uh, caught and um, what happened later on, we, we are not aware of that. The next is a uh, detailed documentation which uh, was uh, there uh, in the mayor's office which tells us that it became Soviet property as reparations of war um, and uh, probably was given the Soviet. There were uh, important Soviet, uh, I guess, person who was living there. There is no mention on the file what happened after 46 till 1950. There's no mention who lived there, what happened, whether there was, however, definitely there was someone living there. 1950, there was an interstate government uh, agreement between uh, Hungary and the Soviets, and this uh, house was returned to uh, Hungary, back to Hungary. India began, as this men mentions again, that its diplomatic relations in 1948. We were not housed here then. Uh, we began, we came here in 1955. 1955 are then charge the affair. Charge the affair means someone who's in charge of the affairs of business. When the ambassador is not there, the ambassador, as I told you, was based in Moscow. Uh, very uh, enigmatic uh, person who came from India, Mr. Rahman, M. A. Rahman, who was charge the affair. He arrives in Hungary at that time, and uh, he rents from the state 
the current premise, the 14 Buzavara Gutsa, where we are, and of course, uh, the India House residence for himself to live in. Uh, the house needs a lot of painting, and he is overseeing that. Some of you might have heard, must have heard the story which Ambassador told us, uh, but I will repeat it again. So Arpad Gons, who was a student leader then, uh, comes to him while he's overseeing the painting of the residence. And he comes to him and he, he says he wanted some intervention because the Soviets were here. There was uh, the student uprising was going to happen in 1956, which hadn't happened till then, the revolution hadn't happened. So he comes to, the, uh, comes to uh, Rahman for support because India was very friendly with the Soviets then. Our Prime Minister Nehru was friendly with, uh, the, prime, uh, with the Soviets. So the student leader, when he came uh, to the uh, embassy residence, uh, our Shahji noticed that he was being followed. Uh, so they decided to nickname him the painter and decided him to say that the painter, every time there was, the code name was the painter has arrived and he would go outside, look at the building and decided to discuss that. In 1956, very soon, of course, very soon, a few months of uh, Rahman's arrival, uh, Arpad Khan, the student leader, was jailed. He was sent, um, uh, he was jailed along with many other student leaders. Other student leaders were uh, uh, assassinated, some of them. Uh, Mr. Rahman was able to send a lot of notes back to Delhi, back to Nehru, a lot to the ambassador then uh, in Moscow. And with a great effort, his effort and our ambassador in Moscow, his effort, uh, we were able to get him a life sentence and uh, however, as uh, we see in 1963, general amnesty was declared, it was uh, fortunately, and he was a free man then. Uh, in the meantime, there's a little story on what happened on the driver. The, the Indian embassy had a driver who was helping uh, his wife, Arpad Gan's wife uh, and uh, there was a pun who used to help them i'm not sure financially or not but definitely would go to their houses these people were also uh, the secret service was after them so arpad gons at one point of time took his driver in the diplomatic car in his diplomatic car and put the pun in the boot of the car in the Rahman. back of the car Rahman. Rahman. okay Rahman took him to uh, vienna uh, he was hiding behind the boxes, they put cartons and he was hiding behind the boxes. He drove the car himself and to Vienna and that person was able to, the peon was able to go because he knew if he lived here, he would definitely be assassinated because he was playing such a crucial role between Rahman and the family of Arpad Gans. Uh, next slide you see of course, all of us or some of us know here, that Arpad went on to become the first president of uh, Hungary. Uh, he was, uh, when he became the first president, the first visit outside Europe he made was to India. So we were very, very happy that he gave us such great honor. You can see a picture of a then president, uh, Venkat Raman, with his spouse, and he and his spouse, he went to India. However, of course, he wanted to meet his great friend, uh, uh, Rahman, uh, M.A. Rahman, he was very, very uh, keen to meet him. So the request was made uh, in the ministry that the president wants to meet uh, the retired ambassador. And the ambassador, of course, decided, was uh, asked to come and meet him in his office. Arpad Gons, as you would hear the famous story, said, no, I'm the painter. I will go to the ambassador's house as I used to go then. And this is a picture, what you see is in the residence of uh, M.A. Rahman in New Delhi. Uh, Arpad Khan goes to meet him in the familiar style. He's sitting on the sofa, on the arm of the sofa, shows how friendly he was. There's a picture of Arpad Khan then on his side table. Uh, the next slide shows us uh, a picture of Rahman in his residence much later on in his life. However, there is also a picture of Arpad Khan there. Uh, all of you can see, in, there's an article which we found 
which says we have to look forward, which is what Rahman said when he was invited on the 35th anniversary of the revolution. He was invited here. He was invited to the parliament by Arpad uh, Gons. This is a picture. There's a discussion going on, as you see uh, over here. And then uh, when we came here two years back, unfortunately, Arpad Gans passed away. Uh, the ambassador, of course, my husband, was there to lay a wreath. Uh, at that time. So this was on 6th of October 2015. At that time, we had no idea, or probably I did not have I had quite an idea what India had played such a role in his story. And nor did I know, nor did I ever think I would go about finding all this. I mean, I knew that, I'd heard the story, but I'd heard the story and it went top of my head and went out of my head. <laughs> I mean, it didn't sink in. It just when we started finding out about the history, about what I call the soul of the house. I was very keen to know what was the soul of the house. Did a person, someone said, so there was a person who was who owned the champagne factory owned the house, or someone said there was a Gestapo head here, someone said there was, a, you know, there were many stories circulating around at that time. So when we started, and then we were, I actually realized the significance of what had happened then. The next slide uh, is uh, when, um, on the 60th anniversary of the commemoration of the revolution, um, uh, the Hungarian government invited uh, everyone from Rehman's family. Unfortunately, Rehman was no more. So his daughter, as you see, was invited, daughter, son-in-law, and his son from Germany. Son who resides in Germany. We had a small gathering in the embassy to honor them. They were here, but they were invited for the main function. Uh, the daughter and her husband are seated there, right? If you see her daughter, and um, on the right side of her daughter is uh, her husband, uh, Mr. Sani. Uh, then, of course, now the shades of India. We are the current residents of the India House. Not going to be there that long. We've done our two years over here already. And this is the Indian Embassy residence from 1956. We own it. Since 1987, Indian Embassy bought uh, three houses. The two of them is what the history I just told. Currently, it wears the warm colors of India. Uh, and uh, it's open to everyone, anyone and everyone who wants to visit. Everyone is welcome to our residence. There is no back door entry, however, now. We open it from the front. We have nothing to hide. So everyone is invited. However, now, after this, for uh, a small glass of wine, or maybe a big glass of wine, <laughs> and some chicken tikkas. And uh, we have Gabor here, who, and my husband here, and me, and of course, uh, we will answer your questions on what we know on the history of the two houses. Thank you. One more thing, we have uh, this book which was written by Rahman, which says, uh, I think, diplomatic relations between 56 and 59. There are a few copies. We have eight, nine copies uh, available outside. Anyone who wants to take it, who's interested in reading the history and the role, uh, his diaries is what it's called. It's in Hungarian. And anyone who wants to read it in the class, if you want to read it and maybe circulate it amongst yourself, or maybe keep it, you're free to take it from here. Thank you very much.
aki meg nem jár, és csak most van itt először ő nekik is mondom, hogy szívesen látjuk minden csütörtökön az előadássorozaton. Őtől is.